My cousin asked me to take a look at her struggling MacBook Pro. When I turned it on, the screen was completely black. Luckily, the heart and llama stickers are okay, but I still needed to figure out why the screen wasn't working. When I picked it up to have a better look, I found the problem. When I touched the screen, I could see that there was a crack in the LCD panel underneath the glass. Even though the glass is not cracked, the LCD panels can break if there's too much pressure on the computer. Unfortunately, the only way to fix it is to replace it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to replace a MacBook Pro screen. Let's go! I'm going to start this repair by reviewing the tools that you'll need. First, of course, is the new screen. I got this screen on Amazon from Electronics for about $330. That's a lot of money in 2021, but it was still $200 cheaper than taking it to Apple. When you're buying a screen, make sure it includes the full housing like this, and it's not just the LCD panel. I'll have this kit linked below. Next up, you're going to need an electronic screwdriver kit like this. Macs use many different screws, so you'll need one with lots of different bits. You'll also need a cleaning brush, some tweezers, and a non-marking pry spudger like this. I prefer one like this that's flat on one side and pointed on the other. Grab a guitar pick and also an electronic cleaning towel. I'll also use a suction cup like this, but they're totally optional. Again, I'll have all these tools linked below. I also recommend getting some canned air to blow out the dust. Now with all my tools, I'm ready to take apart the MacBook. First step is to flip it over so I can take out the screws underneath it. As I talked about before, there's a million different screws in a Mac, so I highly recommend getting a magnetic mat like this. It organizes the screws and helps prevent static shock. To make it easier to work on, flip the MacBook over so the hinge is facing towards you. The majority of the work will be done on the hinge. To remove the base screws, you'll need this 1.2mm star bit. There's only six screws around the outside that you'll need to remove. Be aware that the screws come in different sizes, although they use the same 1.2mm bit. Because I'm working with so many different screws, I like to organize each step into one of these boxes. If the screw is on the right side of the part I'm working, I put it on the right side of the box. And I use a new box for every step I'm working. With the screws out, I used a suction cup and a guitar pick to remove the back panel. Slide the pick around the outside and the back panel will eventually come apart. Push the panel forward to remove it. If you pull it straight up, it could bend or break these hooks. With the back panel off, we can now see the internals of the MacBook. Before you take anything apart, however, I recommend getting your camera and taking a picture. It's very helpful to have a photo reference when you're trying to put everything back together. To know what we're working with, this is the cooling fan, and the heat sink is below it. The three black squares are the batteries. This area is the motherboard, and the silver rectangle on the left is the storage. And this cable on the top is the trackpad. The screen connects to the motherboard across the bottom, so we're going to need to remove most of these screws. Before I disconnect the screen, I need to make sure I kill all power coming from the battery. Underneath this black cover is where I can disconnect the battery from the motherboard. This ribbon cable has a latch on the end that I need to lift up to disconnect it. Pull back the end plastic to find the latch, then carefully lift it up. Now pull back on the ribbon cable to slide it out. We're not done yet, we have to remove this screw which holds down the metal connector to the battery. I'll need to use a T5 bit to unscrew it. This is an unusual screw for the Mac because it has such a wide surface on the head. The wide diameter helps the connection hold down to the battery. We're still not done, there's one more step we need to do to disconnect the battery. Using a pry tool or your fingers, carefully lift up this metal connection so there's no contact with the underneath metal. And now there's no power going to the circuit board. Now the battery is disconnected, I would like to mention that you can upgrade your storage by removing this unit here. Remove the screws on the top part, then take off this protective cover, and you can insert more storage into your Mac. I'm not going to do it in this video, but I thought I would just mention it. And now the fun part begins. I now need to take off the plastic hinge covers on the right and left side. There's only two screws holding each side down, so using your finger or tweezers, you can pull out the plastic tabs. They're shaped to the left and right side, so we'll need to store them in the right order. Next step is to take off the silver plate in the middle. 
It's an easy step because there's only two screws holding it down. And to remove it, I'm going to use a T3 bit. These screws are very small, so make sure to organize them correctly. Just like the last step, I now need to remove the plate right above it. These two plates are important because they cover the ribbon cable underneath. I need to remove this cable, so using my pry bar, I slide below it and it pops right off. Be careful about touching the metal if you use your fingers. Next, I need to remove these two silver plates. Take out the two screws on each side and they'll come right off. Again, you can see that I've organized everything step by step and I've tried to place the screws where I took them off on the parts. Organizing it like this makes it so much easier when putting back together. Next, take out these four large black screws and to do that, I'm going to use a T5 bit. Now this next part is the most fun you'll ever have, but not really, because it's not fun at all. Using the 8mm bit, I now need to remove these 12 tiny screws. Zooming in closer, you can see they're very small. They're so small as these screws are also used in iPhones. Having a bit with a magnetic end makes it so much easier to keep track of them. If you need to remagnetize your bit, just rub it on a heavy duty magnet. All right, with that out of the way, we now need to remove this screw so we can take off the antenna unit. In addition to the screw, we need to remove these two antennae, which go to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. To remove the screw, you'll again need a T5 bit. Next, we need to remove the antenna, and the best way to do that I found is using a pry bar. A good trick is to slide the pry bar behind the end of the antenna where it connects to the motherboard, then carefully twist it to eject the antenna. Now we need to take out the entire heatsink vent as it's connected to the antenna. Those 12 little screws held it down, but with them gone, we can rotate it 90 degrees and it will slide right out. Next, grab your T4 bit and there's four more screws that we need to remove. These four screws hold the ribbon cables that go to the screen. These black plastic tabs hold the ribbon cables in place. With those screws out, I can pull the ribbon cables forward, which allows me to separate the screen from the rest of the computer. But the last step before I can pull the screen out, I need to grab a TR8 bit. Then I need to remove the six screws holding down the hinges. These screws are locked very tight, so you'll need to use a lot of force to get them out. And now we're finally ready to take off the broken screen. The hinges are holding down the screen, so we'll need to bend them forward. A trick I found is to grab a zero-sized bit like this, then put it into the middle of the computer hinge. This allows you to bend the hinge backwards without putting too much pressure on the MacBook. You'll need to do this process on both sides. With the hinges bent, I can now remove the screen. Open up the screen, then go back and forth between the hinges to bend them forward, and repeat that until you're able to slide the screen out. Once that's ready, you'll be able to completely separate the two parts of the computer. Looking at the old screen, you can see the ribbon cable that we just removed. The ribbon cable on the new screen is what we're going to attach to the computer, so everything will work. We're pretty much going to go in reverse order and reattach everything. Before I put on the new screen, I'm going to clean everything out. It's surprising how much dust and debris can get inside your laptop. Now I need to prep the new screen. Be careful when removing all the plastic and packaging tape, so you don't accidentally damage the glass or LCD panel, especially on the ribbon cable on the bottom. 
Also be very careful on the hinges. Use a screwdriver or else you might accidentally crack the LCD panel. Also bend the hinges greater than 90 degrees so they can slide in at an angle. If it's possible, I would leave the plastic covering the screen so you don't accidentally scratch it when you're putting everything together, but you will need to remove anything covering the bottom ribbon cable. With the screen prepped, I'm now ready to put everything back together. It's very important that the hinges are greater than 90 degrees so that you can slide in the bottom motherboard. Carefully adjust the screen until it locks down in place. Once it's set, grab your screwdriver and close the hinges. Just like we did before, go back and forth between the hinges and carefully pry them down until you're able to completely close the MacBook. Once you're able to close it, it's important you only put in the middle screw and don't tighten it down all the way. With the one screw holding the hinge, you'll need to open the MacBook and close it so it will align the screen to the bottom of the computer. After you open and close it, check that the edges align squarely. Everything lined up, so now I'm ready to tighten the hinges and put everything back together. Make sure you get the screws on the hinges very tight. These are major pressure points when you open the screen so they easily can come loose. With the hinges tightened down, I double check that everything lines up correctly when I open and close it. It's all good, so we're ready to go. We're gonna start with these longer screws, then we're gonna set the ribbon cable in place so we can screw them down. There's four screws to hold the ribbon cable down. Keep the ribbon cable away from the plastic when you tighten it down so it doesn't accidentally get caught or torn. Next, put the antenna in at a 90 degree angle and it will slide right in place. Grab the T5 screw and then tighten it down on the left corner. Using your price budget, you'll need to lock down the antenna to the motherboard. Set it in place with tweezers, and then push down with a pry bar. Next, grab your T4 bit, and we'll need to put the four screws on the bottom. As you're putting these screws in, we'll also need to reconnect the ribbon cable. Also, don't forget the screw by the antennae. With those in, we now need to grab the 8mm bit and tighten down the 12 crazy tiny screws. Again, highly recommend rubbing the bit on a magnet to make sure it's magnetized. Next up, we'll need to put on these two silver plates. Make sure the cutout step is on the top. When I put the plates in, I need to make sure there's enough slack on the two ribbon cables. I don't want the cables to get pinched or torn when I open the screen. Right now I don't want to tighten the plates down all the way because I need to check that the ribbon cables are set correctly. To test that the cables are set correctly, I need to turn the MacBook vertically, then very carefully open the screen. I kept an eye on the cables to make sure they didn't tear. Everything looks great, so I can tighten down the screws holding the plates. Next up, I need to grab a T4 bit, then I need to put on the two protective plates that cover the ribbon cable. Now at this point, I'd like to give a friendly reminder that these screws are very small, and they can get lost very easily, just like it did here. I didn't hold it tight enough with the tweezers and it shot across the room. I had to pause the video and spent several minutes looking for it but couldn't find it. I found the screw the next morning, but unfortunately had to reopen the MacBook and put it in, so hopefully you learn from my mistakes and be more careful. Alright, moving on, the next step is to put on these plastic hinge covers. They're shaped for the right or left side, and to put it in correctly, tilt it at an angle, and it will lock right into place. There should be four screws to tighten them down. Alright, we're almost done. We have the screen in place, so the final step is to connect the battery. Grab a T4 bit and the large screw that covers the battery plate. Now when you put in the ribbon cable, you need to make sure the latch is open. Use a pry bar to lift the latch, then carefully guide in the ribbon cable. With the battery connected, you now have power running through your MacBook, so be careful not to short it out. The final step for the battery is to put on this protective cover. We have everything put back together, so now we can put on the back panel. 
match the back panel with these grooves, and then you can slide it into place. You'll hear it click when it's set correctly. Work your way around the MacBook applying pressure until you hear everything click in place. With that set, we can finally put in the screws that hold it down. And now comes the most intense part when we turn it on. However, when I open up the MacBook and hit the power, nothing happened. I tried a button reset and all I got was a black screen. I was worried for a minute, but then remembered all I needed to do was plug it in. With external power, it started right up. And I will say the screen looks fantastic. The trackpad and speakers both worked, and I then tested it on the battery and everything worked perfectly. So we'll mark this down as a win. The screen looks completely new, and I'm not sponsored in any way, but I'll have it linked below. Hopefully this gave you the confidence to fix your screen or to fix someone else's. I have a few other Apple repair videos linked below, so check those out too. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.